Welcome to the Terran Tall Class Corvette Ship Brief. All right, the Terran Tall is a light, fast anti ship corvette produced by the Soviet Union in the late 1970s and continues production all the way to today with the over five variants that we're going to talk about of the ship. They just keep updating it, whether it's its electronic warfare, its missile systems. Uh, they just keep adding it because this is a very useful ship for any country with uh, a coastline, whether it's small or large like the Soviet Union and today's Russia Federation is. These little corvettes act as coastal defense craft and uh, have very capable anti-ship weapon systems on board that we're going to highlight for you today. The Tarantal was mass produced and sold to many nations all around the globe from Vietnam to Iraq to Poland and even East Germany that eventually became Germany and had some of these uh, African countries like Yemen and uh, European uh, countries like Bulgaria uh, all bought variants of this type of ship to serve in their navies. Uh, so it's a very capable, low cost, low endurance small crew sur anti-surface ship. All right, so the Tarantal class, Project 12411, um, is the successor to Project 205, the Tsunami class. That is the OSA class. OSA class is not pictured here. Uh, we'll probably go over all these small boats um, in, in other lectures, but this is the first small boat ship brief we've done. So we're talking about the top right hand picture, the Tarantal. Uh, like I said, it's a, a larger and more seaworthy armed uh, missile boat than the Osa was, uh, but it's also smaller than the Nanuchka, which is another Corvette that we'll, we will get into in another lecture. It is very similar in size, performance, and capability as the Polk class there at the bottom. The Polk is an anti-submarine variant of the Tarantal class, and that could be argued back and forth. But what it cannot be argued is the Polk is a submarine hunter, where the Tarantal is a ship hunter. And so if you get these two small Corvettes working together, you can cover two domains at once anti-submarine warfare anti-ship warfare you put a couple airplanes overhead for air cover and uh, you got yourself a coastal defense navy on the cheap so where are these built uh they're all over the place uh the saint petersburg um joint ship company builds them there uh also J um joint ship company builds them in uh, Rybinsk, russia that's on the volga river that connects down to the caspian sea where Turkmenistan has actually bought a couple of these for Caspian Sea duty. And on the Pacific coast, Vladivostok builds all the ones that serve on that side of the world. So these things are built uh, on both sides of Russia, east, center, and far west. So like I said, there are five variants we're going to talk about today. And I think now is a good time to mention that the naming of this ship is a little controversial among naval experts, okay? But for our purposes here, we're just gonna call it Tarantal one, two, through five, okay? But there are very small differences between these different variants in some cases, and that leads naval experts to disagree on whether or not Tarantal three, for example, is actually Tarantal four, or is it just another version of Tarantal three? Russia, because they will not bother to engage with the international community of experts and put out specifically what is this class. It is up to NATO and other naval experts to argue with each other over what is a Tarantal 3 and what is a Tarantal 4. So let's start with Tarantal 1. And these were primarily built for export. Um, Tarantal 2, which is a near identical copy and built during the same time frame, were built for the Russian Navy. But there is a big difference between these two. Um, but let's talk about the similarities first. Both Tarantals 1 and 2 are 470 tons at 42 knots, max speed, uh, 56 meters long, 10 meters of beam. These dimensions will be consistent with a small exception of, of tonnage at the end uh, throughout all the Tarantals. Uh, they do have ga two gas turbines, two shafts, and a 40 crew. The original and exported Tarantal ones did have a diesel engine, so that would technically make it a code DAG. But 
all the Tarantals afterwards had two gas engines, two gas turbines. So Tarantal 1 and Tarantal 2 both shoot the SSN-2 Styx missile. We'll talk about that in detail. There's uh, two twin launchers on each side. The AK-176, the 76 millimeter gun on the bow. This is interesting because this is a dual purpose gun on every other ship that it's put on. But the designers labeled this 76 millimeter gun as an anti-aircraft gun to be used against aircraft. But we know that this gun is installed on a lot of ships in the Russian Navy. And in those cases, it's dual purpose. So we will assume that it's dual purpose here as well. Two, AK-630 Seawiz, that's close in weapon systems there on the back, uh, are complemented with an electronic warfare suite called Vimpel R2. Uh, the base tilt Seawiz targeting radar is uh, there amidships. It's the big thing, looks like a drum right in the center of the ship. And there's Bandstand, which is just forward of that. Literally looks like a band stage. That's how it gets its NATO name, Bandstand. And there's decoy launchers on the aft end, and in the case of Tarantal 1 and 2, on the bow as well. PK-16 on the aft, PK-10 on the bow, and those are uh, smoke, infrared, and chaff decoys. All right, so let's talk about the Styx missile. This thing was a nightmare when it came out. Uh, this, this goes all the way back to the 60s, and it's a very large anti-ship missile. It goes 715 miles per hour, uh, about you know 100 meters above uh, sea level. Uh, they can be launched at five second intervals, and they have an inventory of four. Uh, but because the missiles are not linked to each other, uh, they they probably could have launched more than four. But they had a, a limited magazine on each ship of only four missiles. Now, here's where the difference between Tarantal 1, the export to every other nation in the world, it seemed, to, and the Tarantal 2 come in. Tarantal 1 that they exported to Yemen and Egypt and Poland and Vietnam and I everywhere else uh, were only 40 kilometer export sticks missiles. And that's what makes it a Tarantal 1. Everything else is the same in Tarantal 2. Tarantal 2 are the ones that Russia kept for themselves and had literally doubled the range in the same missile. So obviously Russia, or back then the Soviet Union, is not selling a missile to what could potentially in the future be competitors and give them a peer-to-peer -peer match missile. So Tarantal 1 expert um, variant, export variant, has a 40 kilometer Styx missile, four of them. Tarantal 2 has four 80 kilometer Styx missiles. The rest of this ship is the same. The only difference is the weapon, the primary weapon. Let's talk about the AK-76 uh, 76 millimeter gun on the bow. This IOC to 1977 shoots two rounds a second, pretty fast. Uh, effective range is uh, 10 kilometers, only has a 152 round magazine. And uh, that took uh, me by surprise. Apparently the magazine for this uh, turret is very small so it can continuously fire for just over a minute before it's out of ammunition so and it is primarily used according to the designers for self-protection from anti you know from air helicopter and incoming missiles this gun works in conjunction with the close-in weapon systems on the rear end of the ship to shoot down incoming missiles and speaking of which here they are there are two AK-630s uh, on the aft end of the ship, uh, you know, one facing port, one facing star starboard. They cover a little more than 180 degrees apiece, but neither one of these can face forward, which is probably why the 76 millimeter gun is designated as uh, an anti-air gun, just so that it can protect the ship. The ship can protect itself from uh, air contacts coming from the bow. But these Sea Whiz have 30 millimeter guns. They're six barrels a piece, and they can push, depending on the variant of Sea Whiz, between 4,000 and 5,000 rounds uh, per minute. They do have a 4,000 meter effective range, and the magazines on Tarantal 1 and 2 were only 2,000 round magazines. Later variants uh, increased this to uh, an additional 1,000 rounds to 3,000 rounds total uh, per Sea Whiz. These are both uh, radar and optically guided. And there's that base tilt fire control radar. I highlight it there with a red arrow on the mast for you. It looks like a, uh, a drum. 
All right, electronic warfare and decoys up there at the top of the mast. You have the little uh, ECM projectiles or projectors, rather. Uh, they they transmit. They try to mask the ship's signature and uh, blind incoming missile radars. And on the aft end of the ship, you can see the two launchers. Those are PK-16s uh, facing port and starboard, and those launch a, a cloud of smoke uh, with flare and chaff all in one. And uh, I'll show you a picture of that in operation here at the end of the, the brief. Moving forward to Tarantal 3, they built a lot of these. The Tarantal 3, which is still in service today, some of these are, uh, they built a total of 34 units. And the uh, this is where they went full um, combined gas and gas turbine here. Uh, they also upgraded the missile to the SSN-22 Sunburn. And this took that missile to supersonic speeds. Uh, they're, you know, Jane's fighting ship says that it was over Mach 2 or just about Mach 2 uh, as this cruise missile's coming at you. And this added a, a high capability to its anti-ship performance because the close-in weapon systems of the 80s, 90s, and honestly still in service today on Western NATO's is a ballistic we um, missile defense uh, called Sea Whiz. And there's a goalkeeper for uh, the Royal Navy. Uh, but those are relying on 20 millimeter rounds to shoot down an incoming missile. It's not going to have a lot of time to shoot ballistic rounds at a missile that's coming in at Mach 2. Yeah, it's it's going to be less than a second. So you're going to have to be very accurate very quickly to shoot one of these down. And they can shoot four at a time per ship. The rest of the ship is pretty much the same. Uh, they got rid of the PK-10 decoys on the back, but they kept the PK-16s uh, back there. Those are the decoy launchers, smoke, infrared, chaff, com combo launchers, you call them. Uh, the, the dimensions are all the same. Uh, and this is where the Tarantal 4 comes in. They built two extra units. One source says one extra unit, which would make sense financially, just for testing. Why would you build two units for testing? Well, maybe one failed. Maybe one was unreliable. Or maybe they had lots of tests to do. And as they were installing modifications on one Tarantal, they were actually performing tests on a second Tarantal. Either way, the Tarantal 4 is exactly like the Tarantal 3, except it is strictly used for testing and training. So what they did here is they replaced the SSN-22 Sunburn missiles, those Mach 2 anti-ship cruise missiles, with the new, in uh, IOC'd in 2003, KH-35 Switchblade anti-ship missiles. And what's key there is she can carry a lot more missiles with the KH-35s. So Tarantal 3 mass-produced 34 units uh, shooting sunburn missiles for a piece with them. Tarantal 4, exact same thing, but only two units and used for testing. And this is the Mosquit SSN-22 Sunburn anti-ship missile. This thing IOC'd in 1980. It has a range of 250 kilometers. It is supersonic at Mach 2 and radar homing. This is a nasty, nasty missile. It is large. It is big enough to put a big hole in your ship, uh, regardless of if you're a frigate or an aircraft carrier. And it's extremely difficult to shoot down. I found a great line dr drawing of it for you here where you can see the, uh, the radar homing head and navigation system on the bow, uh, the warhead and guidance system behind that, and then the rocket fuel and engine uh, components behind that. It has a radio al altimeter on the bottom. That's how it knows how far above sea it is. And it can be set in two different modes where it is very low to the ground, low to the sea level. But if sea state gets above three, they can set it to a little bit higher altitude. So a sudden wave doesn't knock this thing out of the air. So the radar altimeter and uh, steering linkage are all connected by the navigation computer. And that's how it maintains its, its altitude is a very, very fast missile. This is the Tarantal 5, also known as the Molnia class. And Vietnam bought a couple of these, and that's what the Vietnamese call these. But know that this is the fifth in the family of Tarantals. Uh, a couple big differences here. It's a little bit heavier because it's got more weapons. Engine room and performance-wise, it's the same. But notice it's quad launchers instead of uh, the twin launchers the old version have, 
we have two quad launchers on each side for a total of 16 anti-ship missiles. So the SSN-25 Switchblade, very new. I was see it in 2003 uh, missile. It's an anti-ship missile, uh, very capable. And it basically doubles the capability, the, the offensive capability of this ship by, by having um, the, these extra launchers on board. Has the same uh, close-in weapon system with that 76 millimeter gun on the back, but it has improved electronic warfares uh, with a modern positive ME 3D air search radar. Very compact, lightweight, capable, long-range air search radar. Uh, the Gabburn Bal fire control radar controls, uh, gives fire control data to the missiles and controls the gun on the bow. Uh, the Fruno navigation radar, ironically, is the same one we use in the United States. <laughs> it may not be the same model, but it's the same company, uh, which is a little funny when I read that. And of course, they have the PK-16 decoy system on the back still. So. There is a big leap in capability from Tarantal 3 slash 4 to Tarantal 5. And uh, this one is exported and sold to anybody who will buy it. Vietnam is one of their customers. This is the Switchblade missile I've been going on about. This thing is pretty cool. It's basically the Harpoon, but it's the Russian variant for it. And uh, it IOC'd in 2003. It's got 3,000 kilometer range. It's subsonic. Uh, 480 kilogram warhead yeah basically it's the harpoon yeah, it's the it's the russian version of it and uh here here's a a cad drawing of it it's uh, an anti-ship missile yeah, it goes in subsonic and uh you know they just try to saturate the target to get past the close-in weapon system on this one here they essentially gave up the speed and unreliability of the sunburn for additional reliability of this design and uh but slower speed yeah, and this one can be launched because of its light weight uh, from aircraft, helicopters, and of course ships like we're talking about today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Tarantal family, the fast, light, Soviet-era born Corvettes that sail around uh, the globe, really. They're all over the place between Asia, Africa, the Middle East, Europe, the Baltic Sea, the Black Sea. Ukraine had four of these until Russia annexed Crimea in 2014 and captured them, uh, took them back, basically. <laughs> uh, here you can see one on uh, Navy Day. This is in St. Petersburg Harbor where they're firing off some of those decoy launchers. And you can see how the decoy produces uh, flare for IR disruption, smoke for visual observation, and uh, chaff, which you really can't see here, but that you know makes the radar signature so big and diffuse that it's likely an incoming radar-guided missile will simply miss the target and uh, land in the water past the target is the idea. So I thought you might like to see what this these decoys look like now. This is a modern uh, decoy launcher. Uh, in the United States, we call them combo launchers because it's no longer smoke or chaff. It's both. So we call them combos. Yeah. All right. So uh, my final thoughts on this is, man, this ship uh, is surprisingly very successful. I mean, it's it's easy to make fun of it because it's of its size, but for its mission, it does it well. It's a coastal defense uh, ship. Doesn't have a lot of endurance, but it's extremely high speed and it can it can kill a ship. You know, those four missiles, uh, whether it's the sunburn or it's 16 of the switchblades, it will take a ship out. So uh, very, very capable little coastal defense craft, if you want to call it that. Uh, because they keep modernizing it, including the electronic warfare suite and the weapon suite, increasing the number of weapons on board, it's keeping this ship viable. Uh, this thing was designed in the 70s, conceived of in the late 60s, and it's still in operation today as a Tarantal 5. So very, very interesting design that is functional, so it still works. Very all right. Well, I'd like to say thank you very much to all the Patreons out there, man. You guys are the best. And uh, the reason why I make these is for you. You guys give me the ability, the time to uh, research these, find all the photos, put it all together into a little lecture like this and uh, post it up for you. So I want to say thank you very much to, of course, Scott Borg, who might also be known as Harpoon Henry because...